Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be checking out candles sent in by another subscriber by the name of Valina Lopez, and her candle company is called Velas Veil. Vale. She sent these in a while ago. As many of you know, I've been backed up on a lot of these reviews for quite some time, so still trying to catch up a little bit here. So thank you for your patience, and thank you all for tuning in to this review. If you're new to this channel, my name is Wade. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company, where you come for the candle making and candle business, but stay for the collaboration. So here we are, reviewing another one of your fellow subscribers' candles. They were sent in voluntarily, of course, for feedback, constructive criticism, and just my overall thoughts on their products and maybe some suggestions along the way. All right, so I've got the box open and it looks like we've got actually two letters in here, which if you've seen these in the past, you know what that means. Uh, we have a open first letter, which is going to tell us some things they want us to know up front. And then there's an open last letter. And again, this is a lot of fun because throughout this process of reviewing and testing these, I will be making some guesses on what I think we're working with as far as like the wax, and the wicks and things like that. And then at the very end, we can open this up and see how close we were. I've been on a roll lately, but overall, sometimes I'm really good and close on these guesses and other times I'm pretty far off. You just never know. It really just depends if we're working with materials I'm comfortable with or have some experience with or ones that are pretty new to me. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start with this letter. Actually, let's go ahead and get everything out first. Okay, so we've got everything open. I'm gonna set the open last letter, this one, to the side and we will get to that, uh, you know, once I'm done testing everything. But let's start with open first and I will read this and summarize it for you. So what they've shared was that they actually launched on uh, December of 2021. So obviously they have already launched, but still fairly recently. And they're just hoping for some feedback and uh, my thoughts on their products. And then she pointed out that Velos Veil, what that means is Velos in Spanish means candle. And then Veil is really just a nickname of hers. It's just her name short, Veil, Velina. So that's where she came up with her name, Velos Veil. As you can see here, we have three products. And before we dive into the products, let me talk about how they arrived, how they were shipped and boxed. Uh, they came in a small, looks like kind of a eight by six, maybe nine by six by six type box. Plenty of room um, and had a little bit of crinkle cut paper and then otherwise they were just wrapped in bubble wrap. Now it's totally fine to just send your candles in bubble wrap, but I would do at least a couple layers if you're gonna do that. Otherwise, one layer, you might wanna put in some packing peanuts or something as well, just because there is a high risk of damage uh, through shipping sometimes. So that would be my only thought so far. It also looks like she has a custom little matchbox here. Really nice and I really love your logo. It's very sophisticated, very fancy. Uh, let me get a good look here. That looks really nice. Oh, wow. These tins are great. Well, first things first, these are gorgeous. Uh, let's see if I can hold them up. So we'll look at them one at a time, but just wanted to point out they are very, very nice uh, vessels. Now, I'm pretty sure these vessels come from Woodwick. At least that's the only place I've seen them like this. Uh, and they're kind of like this mix between like a metalish bronze and kind of sturdy tin. It's, they're, they're like a tin glass. I'd, it's really hard to explain but they look really, really sharp. And they're high quality. They've got a nice snug, perfectly matching lid. These are just really gorgeous vessels. Let's start with the, uh, let's start with this white one here called Tropical Escape. And this is a good look at the label. This is sort of a textured, I can't tell if it's textured or more of just kind of a matte standard label, but it does have some gold metallic underneath it as well, which I don't know if the camera will show it very well, but it has a metallic sheen, so it's kind of a gold paper. Uh, if you've seen some of my labels, like on the candles behind me, mine have a silver uh, metallic chrome bop on them. So uh, very, it looks really nice. And in fact, if you kind of turn it along with the lights that it's reflecting on, you can actually see it. I don't know if the camera will show it, but it looks gorgeous. Now the candle says 10 ounce, Woodwick, soy blend, hand poured in Florida. Uh, I would not have thought 10 ounce. This seems a little smaller than that, but it could be. Um, or it's a 10 ounce jar. I don't know, I guess it might be. I'm not real sure. I would have guessed probably closer to eight or nine ounces, but they know better than I would. And then on the top, they've got their logo label. And on the bottom, a standard warning label. Let's go ahead and smell this. So this reminds me very much of your standard tropical fragrance. Uh, if you're familiar with the, the common butt naked fragrance, it's sort of like that. Very refreshing, very clean, very, very tropical. You definitely are getting bananas and, and, uh, and pineapple and mango. And then as you can see, it is a wood wick, which also said on the label. And you can actually see that this is a booster wick. It can be hard to show because it's kind of down in the vessel a little bit. But if, for those of you that are new to wood wicks, it is simply a wood wick and with a little bit of an extra small piece of wood in the middle, which is called a booster. 
Uh, and that is typically needed when you are burning waxes that need a little bit more heat or a little bit more um, efficiency. Some waxes that are tougher to burn, especially some of your organic waxes like soy waxes, need that extra oomph to keep the wick going. And that's when you traditionally see uh, booster wicks, or if it's got a really high melt point, it might need it as well. In this case, um, that is kind of a telltale to a little bit more about the wax we're using. And we'll come back and talk about the wax and the wood wicks and stuff here after we check all three of these out. But I wanted to point it out since that was our first glimpse at it. All right, let's move on to this gold one. Uh, and this is called Amber and Driftwood. The gold really pops on this and it just matches the, uh, the, the container itself so well. It may be just me, but I'm definitely getting a lot more amber on this one than I am Driftwood. This smells like a lot of your amber type fragrances. And so that's what's jumping out to me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of to note that this is more heavy on the amber. I actually like Driftwood a little bit more. Uh, those kind of notes better than I do amber. So it was personally, I like the other scent better, but you know, fragrance is fragrance. Everyone's got different personal opinions on that. So that doesn't really mean much, uh, but it's very nice. It actually does smell very sophisticated though. So out of, you know, classy, sophisticated, high-end luxury type fragrances, this one definitely more than the previous one, but just personal favorite. I like Tropical a little bit more. All right, let's take a look at this final one. Uh, this is one of the best looking pink vessels I've ever seen because it doesn't look cheap pink. It looks very, very kind of high-end, classy pink. And it's called White Tea. You want some consistency with your brand and, and she's doing an excellent job with that. Uh, this is my favorite one. I can really pick up the tea notes, but I, I'm getting a little bit of floral too. And I actually really do enjoy most florals. And so that hint of floral mixed with the, the tea, this is, this is actually one of the best tea fragrances I've ever smelled. This is my favorite fragrance of these three, and it's not even close. Definitely my favorite one. Now, before I tell you what I think we're working with as far as what wax and wicks, uh, I, first thing I would say is probably trim these wicks down a little bit. They're a good half inch to three quarters inch above the wax. That's awfully high for a wooden wick. If you've tested them that way and they performed well that way, that's fine, but it's only gonna get longer usually. Most of my success with wooden wicks have been keeping them around an eighth to a quarter inch, really probably not more than that. These are quite high above the surface of the wax. These are sticking up quite a bit. So that would be one suggestion is to trim those down a little bit. Other than that, everything else looks really good about this. Now I mentioned on the size of the wicks, uh, looks like we are using a booster wick. And if I had a guess on the actual size of the wooden wick, I think this is probably a 0 0.03 wooden wick, which is a description of the, how thick the wick is. So 0 0.02 is the smallest, 0 0.03 is medium, 0 0.04 is thicker. Uh, if, you, if you're buying your wicks from there, that is kind of how they use those numbers. And then the, the width, so how wide the wick is in this vessel looks like, oh, I would say probably a 5 8 inch would be my best guess. And to me, it looks like that's too much for this jar, but depends on the wax. If this is a heavy soy wax or a hard to burn soy wax, then it might need all of it. So speaking of the wax, again, I'm going to assume all of this is coming from Makesy because I know the wicks are, I know the vessels are, at least I think the vessels are. The fragrance oil, one of them is really familiar to me. So I'm just gonna assume everything is coming from there. And that's not a bad tactic. A lot of people like to purchase everything from one supplier. It's just easier uh, and cheaper for shipping and things. So with that being said, they've got a, several waxes this could be. It's not the coconut apricot cream. We know that it's, a, it's one of the soy blends. There is a, uh, what do they call it? Supernatural or supernova soy or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. If I, if I remember at, when I edit this, I'll, I'll put it the name on the screen. Um, super something soy and I'm not a huge fan of it. It, it uh, at least in my experience, it was kind of hard to work with and it was really frosty and stuff. And I just didn't really like the way it turned out. Um, supernatural soy flakes, I think is what it was called, uh, whatever. And then the other one, which is what I think this one is, is a deluxe soy or deluxe satin soy, something like that. And uh, what that is, it's actually more of a paraffin soy blend. So the supernatural soy is mostly soy, the deluxe, or the satin soy is really a soy and paraffin blend. And you'll notice the difference because you don't see all the frosting. It has a little bit more of a sheen. Um, it, it's easier to work with. I think it has better hot throw as well. And so that would be my where I put my money as far as the wax. And again, that's me assuming everything's coming from Makesy or Wooden Wick Company. Uh, they've changed their name if you didn't know that. Uh, if it's not from there, then I don't know. I, you, you know, it could be 6006, it could be a lot of other waxes, but I'm going to assume it's from there and I'm gonna go with Deluxe Satin Soy. I actually was messing with that wax a little bit a few weeks ago, so it's kind of fresh in my mind and 
I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And I feel fairly confident in that. So that'd be my guess on the wax. And I told you what I think about the wicks and the fragrance oils are great. Uh, I, again, I really love the white tea one, this one in the pink. It is my favorite by far. Uh, but I'd be curious before I get uh, to the second part of this video here where, where we talk about the testing and, and how all of that went. I'd be curious in the comment section, let me know what is your type of fragrance? Do you like kind of your bakery scents? Do you like floral scents? Do you like woodsy scents? Um, what did I leave out? Uh, bakery, woodsy, floral, sweet, I, I don't know. What's your favorite type of fragrance? If you have one, let me know in the comments. All right, I'm gonna test these. So give me, you know, like a split second. It's gonna take me like a week to test these, but hang tight, I'll be right back here and we will talk about the results, how they tested. I'll provide some video footage. We'll talk about any tweaks and things that I would make if it were me as I continue to test. But overall, I just gotta say that this is a great job so far. The look of these candles is great. Uh, you've nailed the marketing, you've nailed the branding, the whole look and feel, everything looks excellent. So let's get to testing. All right, so I am back and I had some time to test these various candles sent in by Vilas Vale. And these are, once again, just gorgeous candles. I'm kind of torn on what I think about the look on these um, because I'm having a hard time deciding, are these like kind of traditional with a little bit of a spiritual look to them? And maybe it's maybe it's some of the gold I'm seeing, but they're also kind of mixed with like kind of a modern, fun, whimsical look as well. So they're really creative. And again, I, I'm pretty positive these, these vessels are from uh, Makesy. They're just really good looking candles. So I, I don't want to spend too much time on that because I think I talked about that in the first part of the video, that they're just gorgeous and I don't really have any, any issues or, or any comments about the look and your brand is just just rings throughout so great job and let's talk about how they performed so the first thing that i want to say is the the way these candles started off every one of them started off pretty perfect i mean the flame was great from the very beginning um, and you know sometimes if you've used wooden wicks before you, you know that that can be kind of tricky to dial in it can be tough to get that good looking flame and then even more frustratingly you can get a good flame to start with but then oftentimes uh, the next light, it's crazy. Like you'll either have a hard time lighting it or it's going to be overly large and wild and smoky. And there was a little bit of that uh, with these as well, kind of varied by candle. And I would like to say that there's some easy way to fix that. And there's just some kind of simple solution, but there's just not. With wooden wicks, they are more of a natural, um, harder to create consistent wick to wick like a cotton wick would be because there's more natural fibers in it. But by nature, they're going to be a little bit more inconsistent. And uh, the idea is just to get them fairly consistent, pretty close. But there's certain things that you just can't really control. I, I'd love to be able to give you and say like, like this is here, this is how you fix this. And so they're perfect every time, but that's just not the way it is. Um, so you do the best you can. And I would say overall, these were very good. There was one, um, I believe it was this Tropical Escape white candle. And if I, if I mix up some of the ones that I'm referring to incorrectly, uh, you'll see it in the video, the, the one that was uh, I'm, I'm actually talking about. But that one, uh, burned so good uh, the first burn or two and then I believe I had a hard time relighting it I think it was that one it could have been the gold one it's one of these two um, but it, I couldn't get it to light again um, it would light for just a second and then it would constantly go out many of you that use wooden wicks have probably encountered that problem and uh, it's kind of a weird phenomenon it's just hard and sometimes snipping the wick even lower can actually help you with that um, but but for the most part um, you don't see it a ton and when you do you just kind of kind of have to just work around it you just kind of have to finagle with the wick a little bit and keep trying um, and and sometimes it will just end up relighting eventually so that one struggled a little bit at one point or one of them did um, and then the gold one which is I, I believe that the struggling wick was the white one after the second or third burn the gold one was very consistent throughout i believe overall it was um, a, a, a shallower or weaker flame than the other two. Like at one point I thought this was going to be a little under wicked compared to the other two, but it actually did really well because it stayed that, that size throughout. And so it never fluctuated. You did not have like hot moments and then like weaker moments. And, uh, and, and so by the end of it, it actually was probably the best overall burning one. And it was, you know, there was some hang up on the first few burns, but by the time I got about halfway down the jar, the hang up was gone. It was doing a good job. That one did need to be burned a little bit longer. Uh, I felt like in the first couple of burns to, to get a good enough melt pool, 
but you know wooden wicks have the ability to catch it pretty easily because of the white flame. So no, no real concerns there. And it smelled good. It wasn't my favorite of the fragrances itself, but that's more of a personal preference. This pink one, which ended up being my favorite candle by far of the three, I love the fragrance so much. It was the white tea. It was just awesome. I, I haven't had a, a tea fragrance like this that has been quite this good. Both the cold throw and the hot throw, excellent. I was really shocked at how good the hot throw was on that because most tea fragrances in my experience have not been overwhelmingly strong. This one was very, very good. It also burned the hottest though, which is gonna contribute somewhat to that extra scent throw. For the most part, it burned overall pretty good, but it did have some of the, the, the larger flames or kind of hotter burning moments than the other two, but that was just occasionally. And, and then most of the time it would kind of fix itself after burning long enough or after trimming the wick back down, it would, it would do pretty good. Um, you could probably get away with either bringing the width in on this one size or, or downsizing one size and in some form or another. Uh, some fragrances just don't need as much heat as others, and maybe this is one of them. So it's it definitely wasn't bad. It, it definitely is is fine the way it is, but if you wanted to try to tweak it a little bit, you might experiment with one size lower and see if you still get some pretty good results. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't change a whole lot about that one otherwise because it was a really good fragrance. Love the way it burned. Now, there is one exception to that, um, and the pink one. And, and I think it's in some of this footage you'll see, at one point, that one actually struggled to relight as well. And I was like, what's going on? You know, this one, this one was burning just perfectly fine before. Well, what would happen was there was a hidden sinkhole underneath the surface. The first couple burns, you would expose it and you could actually see it. And you'll see it in some of the footage here, you'll see the exposed sinkhole. And in fact, I believe this white tropical one did it as well. But the pink one, um, I, I took some footage and it actually left that hole for quite some time. And when that happens, isn't surrounding the wick. And so it doesn't provide fuel as effectively up to the flame. And the wick is gonna have a hard time staying lit for more than a few minutes or sometimes even seconds. And so there's a couple ways to fix that. Uh, you can kind of melt the surface of the wax and then kind of kind of do this to it and fill it in uh, and then let it reharden. And then you're usually good to go. And the reason I'm pointing this out to, is that there are waxes out there that do have a tendency sometimes to create sinkholes that you cannot see under the surface. And I see this more with soy waxes. Um, and that is because contrary to how paraffin waxes work, which will all shrink together, uh, paraffin waxes do shrink, but they shrink very tightly together. And uh, the, the entire wax compound kind of contracts inward. Whereas, uh, which is why you see dips sometimes and you need to kind of fill those in with a heat gun or a second pour. But that is different than a sinkhole or an air pocket. And so in soy waxes, it's, it's a very different, inconsistent type of material that kind of has a mind of its own. And soy wax will cure and cool and settle very inconsistently all over the place. And that is also why you will see that frosting and polymorphism look um, that looks like crystallization on soy wax is because it cools at just very inconsistent, wild rates. You will have certain parts that cool faster than others. And that causes random spots inside the wax or inside the candle that can create air pockets or sinkholes and little cavities and voids. And that's a great way to think about it. Think of it as like a cavity or like a cave inside. Um, and not a, not a dip, but in the wax, you will see like little craters and openings. And those cavities present problems when you're trying to supply fuel to a flame. Now, I don't want to say that as a way to like scare anyone away from using soy wax or soy blends or really whatever wax you wanna use. Lots of people, lots of companies, businesses use all sorts of different waxes. There's no right answer when it comes to wax. It's more about personal preference, testing and figuring out what works for you. But you just need to be aware of that because if you are aware of it, then you can kind of be looking for it and working on ways to improve it and tweak it. A lot of people with the soy waxes, after they pour the candle and it's mostly firmed up, they will poke some holes around the wick and then they will fill it in with a heat gun or a second pour just to expose some of those cavities and then fill them back in with wax. And that will cause some of those air bubbles from those cavities to rise to the top and pop. And that will usually fix most of your sinkhole issues. But that's some extra work that you have to do. The other reason is just for pure awareness. So if you do have a customer that complains of that issue, you, you can have a decent idea of why that might be happening. Because what I see a lot of is a lot of new makers We'll make a bunch of candles, test them all, and, and they work great for them. They have no issues. And then they sell them to some customers or give them away to some friends and family. And then they'll start getting some feedback like, hey, I can't relight my candle, or my candle's not staying lit, or it drowned out, or there's like a hole near the wick, and stuff that you did not experience as a maker. And so you're confused, and you're like, well, 
I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I've never, I've never seen that happen. And then uh, those makers will then show up on, you know, this channel or Facebook groups and, and try to explain what the problem is and not sure what's going on. Well, this is meant to help you understand what's, what's going on if you are new to candle making. And just knowing that can help you troubleshoot with your customers. So if a customer reports that, you can say, all right, I think I know what the problem might be. It could be an air pocket or a sinkhole in that wax. And then they offer them a couple suggestions on how to fix that. Either, you know, give it a, give it a few minutes, try to relight the wick a few times or reheat the top of the surface a little bit and fill in that cavity and then you're probably good to go. Uh, but just, to, it gives you the opportunity to explain to your customers and you, you're, you're explaining from a, a place of information and, and understanding. So you know your product very well. You can relay that information to your customers and help them enjoy your product to its fullest. So that's the biggest reason I'm sharing that part because it is a, it's not 100% avoidable. It just isn't. It's going to happen sometimes. And in this case, that happened and I just filled in that void, tried to relight the wick a couple extra times and it finally took and then I didn't have a problem again. And so it's really not a big deal, but it can be frustrating, especially as a new maker. Awareness is key and I hope that helped you. And the last thing I'll say before I get to this open last letter and find out what we're working with as far as materials it's just to reiterate one more time that these are gorgeous candles and they perform very, very well. So I, I don't think that you really have much to change here. Maybe just continue testing and little tweaks here and there. But overall, they were very, very good and very good hot throw and good scent choices as well. Now, as far as what I think we're working with, pretty sure the vessels are, are wooden wick or makesy. The wicks, I'm sure, are as well. And that leads me to guessing or assuming that the wax and fragrance oils are from them as well. Now, I don't know a lot of the fragrance oils by heart, like the name, so I'm not going to try to guess on what oils we're working with exactly. Um, like I said, we know one's tropical, we know one is amber and driftwood, and we know one is white tea. Maybe that's just the name of the fragrances. I don't know, but they're all good. But because all these other components are most likely coming from Makes Hero and Wick, I'm going to assume that you're probably using a wax from them as well. That's just a hunch. I could be way wrong. Let me, let me, I guess, backtrack. If, if I didn't know that we were using some materials from Makesy, I would be leaning towards a wax like, um, like a, a coconut soy or maybe even a paraffin soy like a, uh, like a 6006 or some kind of your own mixture using like a paraffin 4630 with other, some other soy wax. This reminds me of a few waxes from 1617 as well, a little bit. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is it's kind of got a creamy soy, parasoy type texture, or maybe a little coconut as well. Um, but because that's a lot of options and I could spend all day making guesses at that, I'm going to go with a wax that is similar at Makesy that they sell called, uh, shoot, what is that called? Uh, satin, satin soy. Is that right? I'll have to fact check myself again after this video. Deluxe soy or de deluxe satin soy. I think that's what I'm thinking of because it's the paraffin blend or the paraffin soy blend. And uh, that would be my best guess on this. This is not the coconut apricot wax. This is not the signature soy or supernatural soy or whatever that other one is called. It's not that one either. That is definitely much more soy and it has more frosting and typical soy wax behavior. So my money would be on the deluxe satin soy. Yeah, that's right if it is indeed from Makesy. If it is not, I don't know. Enough talking. Let's find out what we're actually using. Okay, first sentence says, I get all my supplies from Woodenwick or Makesy. So that makes me more confident on the rest of my guesses. Uh, the tins and the wax and the booster wicks all from Makesy. Uh, doesn't say about the fragrance oils, so I'm not sure, but the wooden wicks are 0 0.03 crackling booster wicks. I think, I think the booster is necessary probably for these candles. So I would stick with that because I think they are like a heavy soy base. You know, you could maybe try just one size smaller on the width on a couple of them and see if you get any improvements. But again, you don't need to make major adjustments here. So just little tweaks. And then the wax, the, the big question here, the wax being used is a soy blend, soy and paraffin blend. And it is in fact, deluxe satin soy. So I think I'm on a pretty big roll with guesses on waxes lately. I think that's like seven of these, these videos in a row. Some of them were pretty lucky though. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think they're gorgeous and I'd be interested in, uh, in, in your thoughts on it. So I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you for trusting me with some of this feedback and just for watching the channel for entertainment or informational purposes. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm just glad you guys are here and enjoy the channel. That being said, check out this next video and I will see you all next time. Thanks.